I want you to be honest when you look at Abby in this section of the game, the moment she saw her father's murder for the first time. I want you to tell me what she did to deserve this. Is he still in the fucking building? Is that... Abby. No! Abby, don't look... Dad! Dad! No! No! Just like you, Abby loved her father, and now she learns all of a sudden that someone came into the surgery room in that critical moment that would decide the fate of humanity, murdered his father in cold blood, the head surgeon who wasn't posing a visceral threat to anyone, but actively was working towards humanity's salvation. You realize Joel could have just spared the doctor's life here, right? He didn't need to kill those doctors to save Ellie. A simple hit from the back of the gun or even a bullet to the leg would be more than enough to get the doctor out of the way so that he could save Ellie. Do you realize how much Joel was motivated by his selfish and overprotective urges and didn't even bat an eye murdering a human being as if he was numb to it all at this point? Just like he didn't bat an eye killing thousands of lives prior. Joel probably thought that this surgeon was some unimportant NPC that was just in his way and would simply be added to the list, so to speak. All in the name of protecting the ones we love, right? Come any closer. I mean it. No! no! You fucking animal! <laughs> Yeah, that was Joel's greatest mistake, as Joel wasn't the only one who wanted to protect the ones he loved and would feel cheated if something happened to them. Please stop! Please don't shoot! Joel, please get up! No! No! Vengeance is an innate emotion that resides in all of us. That doctor was Abby's father, and he was the only doctor who had the know-how to cure humanity of this catastrophe of a pandemic. Not some arbitrary NPC as Joel mistakenly thought while he was on his murder spree. See, all of our actions in life have consequences in some shape or form, whether long-term or short-term, whether severe or benign. Joel has literally killed thousands of people up until this moment and experienced little to no severe long-term consequences until that day. This is called the butterfly effect. For some reason, this seemingly unimportant looking guy's death broke the camel's back and resulted in a dramatic change in his daughter Abby's trajectory of life. Thank you, sweetheart. Look, Marlene. Do it. You're doing the right thing. If it was me, I'd want you to do the surgery. <laughs> she became obsessed with taking revenge on Joel Miller, filled with hatred and the consequence of fostering the state of mind, has left us with this scene at the end. That scene you don't want to look at. I understand completely why you feel so upset and angry when you see this moment. There is nothing worse than to see someone you love being tortured to death in front of your eyes. 
but I don't think you are appreciating the hard problem Neil Druckmann was attempting to address with Last of Us 2. See, humans are extremely selfish and tribalistic beings by nature, and we have sort of evolved to avoid taking different perspectives, but rather stick with our loved ones, even if maybe they're not totally in the right, just so that our family and friends are better off, just so that all of us can stick together. The idea of Last of Us 2 is not Ellie and Joel are the protagonists, the good guys, and Abby is the villain, the scapegoat, she's the person that robbed us of Joel, the lunatic of the story. And this is some run-of-the-mill typical revenge narrative. No. That is the selfish, tribalistic aspect of humanity speaking in all of us. The side of yourself that would do anything to protect those you love. And this relatable, amicable side was already explored by Neil Druckmann in Last of Us 1. But he didn't explore the shortcomings of that same impulse that resides in all of us. How it distorts the truth when it no longer aligns with your self-interests. And for some reason, people have been giving the unnecessary sequel treatment to Last of Us 2, while not realizing it is exploring that exact same theme from the other way around by posing the harder question. What would you do if you were not able to protect those you love when life dealt you a bad hand? Would you succumb to feelings of hatred and act on your reactive impulses on vengeance or choose to examine your state of mind, find something to live for and ultimately move on with your life? Something Ellie wasn't able to do initially even while she had the opportunity, but later on realized the very importance of it. Realizing how short-sighted it was for her to risk her life on a quest of vengeance when she had a baby to take care of and a loving wife who specifically told her how this was all a mistake. After all, what Ellie was to Joel in Last of Us 1 was now what Lev was to Abby, which is why the hesitation in Ellie's face in the final boss fight, sparing not only Abby's life, but also Lev's, just like how Joel would have wanted. See, usually video games spread a wide net but are rarely knee-deep in its underlying fundamentals, in its philosophical and psychological underpinnings, painting either too black or too white of a brush to create a narrative that is ultimately devoid of any semblance of reality, its characters no different than a Saturday morning cartoon. In truth, we are all complex beings motivated by a variety of impulses at any given moment. You can't just label someone as benevolent or evil and act as if these are accurate assessments that can stand the test of time. We are constantly making new decisions and living with their consequences. Sometimes we are forced to live the consequences of other people's actions beyond our control. Just like how Abby had to deal with her father's death at the hands of Joel Miller, I think Neil Druckmann's Last of Us 2 is a psychological and philosophical masterpiece in expressing the two-faceted nature of humanity's desire for objectivity while being highly selfish beings 
who can't care less about the truth when it no longer serves their self-interests. I will soon make an extensive analysis of Last of Us 2 in this channel, however, I want to focus today on how this game is not just telling an unorthodox story, but houses one of if not the greatest third-person shooter mechanics ever portrayed in any video game. I have to finish it. Some of the things this game does on a gameplay perspective is so good, along with acting and graphics, that it is still unparalleled in gaming to this day. On 19th of January 2024, Last of Us 2 Remastered was released, and it had a roguelike mode, so I decided to download it and capture this footage for you guys. Although I'm not a huge fan of roguelike games, Last of Us 2 is different. This was a great opportunity for me to analyze what makes Last of Us 2's combat mechanics so much better than what I would deem as high quality competition like Red Dead Redemption 2. Last of Us 2's combat mechanics are like a combination of Red Dead Redemption 2's animation quality with the fun factor of playing against hordes in Days Gone combined into a linear tight level design. And Last of Us 2 has significantly better enemy AI than both of those games to boot. On the hard difficulty, the game feels so exciting and dreadful at the same time. And with only a few bullets at your disposal, you need to make a decision fast. How far can you do the stuff before risking an all-out shootout where each bullet needs to count? When you need to be extremely precise. That sort of dynamism and excitement is simply not existent in most third-person shooters. Developers are all too eager to provide you with endless ammo and weapons, with subpar level design and enemy AI to boot. From these clips, I hope you see how well Last of Us 2 combines tension, stealth, excitement, level design, animation, melee combat, weapon reactivity, and enemy AI in comparison how meticulously Naughty Dog had perfected this combat. In comparison, Red Dead Redemption 2, which is also an incredible game on its own right, I also plan to analyze the game on the channel, but to be honest, when it comes to moment-to-moment -to -moment gameplay enjoyment, Last of Us 2 is simply just better. Don't get me wrong, animation quality-wise, I think Red Dead Redemption 2 is on par with Last of Us 2, maybe even better. Both have been designed with a lot of care by their respective studios on the technical level, but Red Dead Redemption 2 can't seem to move past its archaic take cover, wait and shoot, rinse and repeat mentality Rockstar loves to do in all of their games ever since GTA and Red Dead Redemption 1 came out. Never really going forward with this foundation and improving meaningfully on its gameplay loop. As a result, sacrificing level design and enemy AI, losing the fun factor of moment to moment gameplay in the name of realism. Unlike Naughty Dog, I think The Last of Us 2 creates a perfect balance of fun and realism in its combat mechanics. Not just story, but also gameplay wise, I think Last of Us 2 is severely underrated and mechanically speaking to this day is my favorite third person shooter of all time Let me know in the comments if you want to see me discuss Last of Us 2 in more detail. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to show your support. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.